Most of the features we've dealt with so far have been fairly simplistic. Uh, what we're going to look at is how we deal with more complex surfaces. Specifically, when the geometry of the surface is more complex, uh, how is it controlled? We're going to look into this profile tolerance, which allows us to have a generalized control of surfaces and we'll relate those surfaces to other part features as we've done in the past. So what is this profile geometric tolerance? Well, we can have a two-dimensional or three-dimensional profile tolerance, and that's based upon which symbol. You should recognize these two symbols. The uh, simple curve would be two-dimensional. The closed curve would be a three-dimensional covering the entire surface. Well, to understand a profile, uh, think of it as a two-dimensional cross-section of some geometry. Now, it could be that that cross-section changes over the length of the feature. For instance, if I had a cone shape, then each two-dimensional cross-section has a circular profile. Uh, the diameter is increasing or decreasing depending upon your perspective, but the profile remains the same. We can use this profile tolerance for any uh, shape or curved surface and we can combine control over form, location, and orientation. So it's perhaps the most generalized geometric tolerance in terms of its applicability. To understand how to interpret this profile tolerance, you need to know the basic profile. You can think of that in a similar way as when we talked about basic dimension. There is some true profile or nominal profile that is specified by the designer. We can also locate this profile based upon a basic dimension. Here we have an oval shaped profile which represents the theoretical or basic profile. And here we have a curved surface Again, this perfect curve represents that basic profile. The actual tolerance zone, its shape will be completely dependent on that basic profile, and that's why it's important to understand what you're trying to control. In addition, we're going to locate that zone normal to the basic profile. So you can see in these two curves, as we move through the curve, the normal to that curve is changing. And so we end up generating an offset curve, which corresponds to the basic profile. We can also have a datum reference frame, which tells us exactly where to put this basic profile in terms of position and orientation. Note that material condition cannot be used. So you should never see an M or an L in the feature control frame if we're using a profile tolerance. There's a slight variation in uh, constructing the tolerance zone, and it has to do with whether we have a bilateral, unilateral, or all-around uh, surfaces. The default is a bilateral. In other words, we're going to create our offset surfaces or cross-sections on both sides of the surface. That would be the bilateral by default. In some cases, the designer wants to uh, place the profile on one side or the other. And so we have this unilateral indicated by the dashed line. Note that the dashed line could be above or below. Again, it's telling us where we should place our tolerance zone. And then the all around is an indication here that we want to control the entire cross section, not that not just the curved surface that we're pointing to, uh, as in the previous two examples. Let's look at the uh, simple 2D case, uh, what we call the line profile. It will be a two-dimensional curve that you're controlling, and it's going to be every two-dimensional cross-section. So here we have our oval shape. We know what the basic profile is, and the all-around indication is redundant in this case since we have a, a continuous curve. So as we look at it from the side, we're going to go down this feature, throughout the width of this feature, and create two-dimensional tolerance zones. 
and try to enclose the surface at that cross section within those two dimensional tolerance zones. And here you've got kind of a blow up of what that might look like. We're only looking obviously at one section and we're following the basic profile with the shape of our tolerance zone. The width is 0 0.005 and now the blue uh, deviating line indicates that specific cross section that we're checking and it has to be within those two curves. So in principle it looks similar to straightness except that we're dealing with a curve. Note that each 2D cross section is independent similar to what we saw with straightness. Well that was a simple type of control where we were only looking at shape and the reason why we know that is no datums were involved and therefore I'm not orienting that tolerance zone and I'm not locating it, so I'm only controlling the shape of that profile. If I add one or more datums, I could control the orientation along with the shape. And then if I add a basic dimension or multiple basic dimensions, I can control location, orientation, and shape simultaneously. So let's see how that would work. The shape only, as we saw in the uh, first example, is a 2D tolerance zone, again based on the basic profile, and as we can see here by this red shaded region, I'm going to have an infinite number of cross sections with this shape of tolerance zone. No relationship with any part features, so I can orient this in any uh, direction. Now I'm going to add a constraint. I place datum A on the bottom surface here, so you should recognize that that represents a plane. So I establish datum A. Now that places a constraint on my tolerance zone in that I have to orient it. Now to determine the orientation, you have to understand what the design is telling you. In this case, as we can see, this 2D profile tolerance zone is going to be parallel to datum A. Now that is not always the case because, of course, I could describe data may as that surface, that surface, and then it would change to perpendicular, perpendicular to datum A. So you have to look at the design and see what the relationship is between the basic profile and your datum. How is this a, a constraint? Well, I can't just orient this profile tolerance looking from the side in any direction. It has to be oriented parallel to A. So each 2D cross section will have to be parallel to A in terms of its profile. So I have shape and orientation control. Well, how could we add another constraint that would tell us something about the location of the basic profile? A simple constraint would be to add a hole feature here. And with the hole feature, we associate datum B and add datum B to our feature control frame. How does that change the relationship here? Well, as you know, we would establish datum B by finding the largest cylinder that fits in the hole, and that would tell us <coughs> where the axis is corresponding to B. Now, the constraint is, of course, that B has to be perpendicular to A. <coughs> that does not change the orientation of our 2D profile. What it does do is center that profile on the axis. Note that we're not controlling all six degrees of freedom, so the 2D profile can rotate about B as long as we can contain the surface uh, for each cross-section in this profile tolerance zone. So it is constraining location. We can't be anywhere. We have to be centered exactly on B. <clears throat> well, we can extend the same principle to three dimensions and that we call a surface profile. With the surface profile, we're looking at the entire surface, not just a cross section. So similar to when we went from circularity to cylindricity, we're going from a 2D profile to a three-dimensional profile. Here, if I look at it from the top, it looks the same as a 2D profile tolerance on the differences. It will be extended across the entire width of the surface there. And so we don't have independent cross sections anymore. The entire surface collectively has to fall within this uh, profile tolerance zone 
and it's three-dimensional. So we're looking at the entire surface simultaneously. Again, the width of the tolerance zone hasn't changed. Uh, it's the same. This is a tighter constraint, obviously, than the 2D profile tolerance because the cross-sections are not considered. So you should understand the concept of a basic profile or the true profile, which would be theoretical, and then the 2D line profile tolerance zone, how that's different than the 3D surface profile. The shape of the tolerance zone always goes back to the basic profile. So it's completely dependent on that. We can control shape, orientation, and location depending on whether or not we use datums and basic dimensions. Datum is used to constrain orientation and location, and don't forget, material condition cannot be used, so you shouldn't see an M or an L in the feature control frame. 